Hi everybody, the Mun Metha here, and thank you for once again joining me on my journey as I go through my favorites list on fanfiction.net. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Lights, I don't know. Um, sorry, it's been a while. Uh, weekends got busy, so I couldn't record. Um, but hey, so I've got seven more stories for you to talk about, so let's just dive in, starting with Alpha and Omega, book two by The Fallen, I'm sorry, Alpha and Omega, book two, The Fallen by Zed Alpha. <clears throat> so this story is a sequel where um, Shinji uh, from Evangelion, after the events of, so this is, first part was Shinji after the events of Evangelion getting thrust into the future and ending up with Arya from Mass Effect and them building a relationship and getting an Eva and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and then they end up going through like a wormhole at the end. Uh, so here the sequel picks up and this one basically jettisons Shinji to an alternate version of Eva. Uh, possibly the movie universe. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not familiar with this universe. I've only really read, uh, watched the movies. Like the original series and uh, End of Eva. That's all, all I watched. So I'm not quite familiar with how this one works. But it seems like it's, you know... Misato as super general with uh, Ritsuko and the others all attacking Seal and uh, Gendo as like three party war or something. So that's there. Um, and so he shows up there with his, you know, superpowers now. And then eventually Arya and their fleet show up as well. Uh, this story overall just really frustrated me um, because. I didn't care for the first part, but I found myself readily engaging with this story, and um, I think that kind of highlights just how little I give a shit about the Mass Effect universe, like really. Um, I was just more invested here than I was in the previous one, um, and I think a lot of it was just the setting. Um, and But the thing is, because I was in invested more, it became all the more, you know, disappointing and annoying when this story ends without concluding at all, at all right? So uh, it falls into the classic case of sequels where if you enjoy the original, you'll probably enjoy, you'll enjoy this one as there's no drops in quality or, you know, agree, you know egregious plot points. Uh, however, it also has the problem of being a narrative-focused story, which doesn't conclude its narrative, and so leaves you wanting more and and all that. Like, it you be you'll probably be left disappointed, like I was. I enjoyed the beginning parts where there was a lot of like character drama between a more confident Shinji who has you know learned to stop taking all the shit thrown at him by everybody else and dealing with stuff, but. Overall, the point is, again, like, it's a narrative-focused story that doesn't conclude its narrative. It falls off my list. Number two is Troll, Troll in the Dungeon by Herman Tumbleweed. Uh, and this is a Harry Potter one-shot that's an alternate take on ho first Halloween 1991, where Harry stands up for Hermione to Ron. Um, and it's fine. If you want a one-shot of Harry dropping Ron like a bad habit and forming a new trio with Hermione and Neville. But it's just that one night, one, I mean one day, with no other further stories. So I think it's okay for a read, but it's nothing like spectacular that I would want to revisit. So it's going to fall off my list. Number three is Naruto the Gamer by Dark Cloud Alpha. Uh, and this is another, you know, as the title says, it's another Naruto gamer fic for this list. Um, it gets one point for not being a carbon copy of, like, the standard gamer system or the Fallout system or something like that. But it doesn't actually get very far narratively, even though there's over 100,000 words. Like, aside from some nice character building between Naruto and Tenten, nothing much really happens in this story and you know it and the the author stopped writing in the middle of a c rank mission like their first c rank mission at least it's a different c rank mission it's an original it's not just land of the waves but um it get that gets one point for novelty but that's not enough for me to recommend this or to see a need to revisit this so it's not going to stay on my list 
<clears throat> Moving on, now we have Naruto Animes Apart by Uncommon Guru. Uh, and this is basically an anime flavored reskin of Kingdom Hearts, where Naruto is the Keyblade Warrior and the first planet they visit is Dragon Ball Z. Um, and that's all we get. We don't get any further than the first planet. Um, I just found this pretty dull and ended up like just like scrolling through it and like I was like this is not interesting I'm okay what's this plot point no nah, nothing you might get a little pleasure out of seeing characters that the author decided that like okay here's the Kairi replacement here's the Yuffie replacement here's this replacement here's that like maybe you'll get a kick out of that but I it doesn't get very far and there's nothing that's a must read it's gonna fall off my list uh Coming to number five, I believe, this is uh, Yet More Fragments by Dogbert Carroll. And this is another one of the many snippet collections that Dogbert Carroll has. Uh, don't know if I've mentioned this before because this is the third one of this series on my list. Um, but the reason there are so many of these is that he, uh, this author, decides for some reason that at when he whenever they hit 75 fragments or 75 chapters in this in each story he breaks he breaks off and makes a new story with a new word added to the title um i'm not sure why i know there's up to i think there's up to eight collections right now and all of them are on my list uh and as with the previous two entries i really enjoy this like dogbert carroll I love his love their comedy. I love their style of writing. Um, they're the ones that have like gotten some interesting stuff. I've, I mean, I like I don't even read Buffy. This I don't. I never even watched like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and stuff. But his love of Xander and like the amount of fix and situations they get in with that made me interested in a lot of in a couple of Buffy fix. So like I just am a really big fan of these. I like it a lot. If you. And the, and the other thing is like even uh, even though some of these like many of these he'll put multiple chapters into and he'll continue but even the ones that they don't that don't get multiple chapters like each one is long enough to at least or at least fleshed out enough that it usually gives you enough of a premise to get a feel for this and enjoy it it's not just like a single prompt of like hey this is a thing wouldn't it be cool if somebody wrote this or something like it you get a feel for what this kind of story would be and most of the time wish there was more of it um, but yeah, I love this. It's going to stay on my list. Number six is No Need for Halkaganian Logic by Midnak Dak. Uh, and this is an Elder Scrolls uh, crossover with Familiar of Zero, where Luis, instead of summoning Saito, summons up a uh, Dragonborn who also knows how games works and enlightens Louise about quests and like essential NPCs and the like um, So the hu this is this is a funny fic um, the humor is very much centered around just recognizing game tropes and the regular inhabitants of Lu for the familiar zero world basically looking at the void familiars as crazy for you know insisting that the world works on game tropes and then being more shocked as they find out that it's true um, like for a relatively short story this does get through the entire plot of familiar of zero which i think is great like you know it like word wise this is only thirty three thousand words but we get through basically season one and season two of familiar zero in that time and we even get one chapter uh at the end of them going back to skyrim like i think this is really fun very um very quick with its humor and very speedy to get through to the relevant to the relevant to the story bits where it only focuses on what because it's just meant to be a graphic that's funny so it only focuses on what scene they're needed to be entertaining and move the plot forward and i think it's great highly recommended it's going to stay on my list all right and the last one for this video is harry potter the role-playing game by ren rag and like i said and i get i you know if you've seen i like gamer i like video games and I, the gamer style and stuff is that so that's why there's so many of them on my list when that became popular uh this is a harry potter one that again doesn't go anywhere uh this seems this one seemed to be leaning or like leading towards a fic where you know harry understands the game mechanics and starts munchkinning everything and you know like you know exploiting the, the systems and stuff 
but it doesn't actually get very far and like even though um there's like thirteen thousand words for here the word count is really that word count is really bloated by the fact that there's con the you know the amount of stats that are there are huge and he's constantly repeating uh repeatedly putting them in the chapters over and over again so it just it's Yeah, there's less than you think, and what's there is not even that much. It's going to fall off my list. So there we have it. Uh, fan fiction status time. I've now read 1,014 stories, and 473 of them have stayed on my list. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, I will leave links to these stories in the description if you want to give them a look for yourself, as well as links to a uh, playlist for this video uh, series if you want to see it from the beginning. Um, links to my profile if you want to see what other stories I'm going to be talking about in the future. I have about, I think, like 200 something stories left to go. But yeah, there we go. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.